Hey everyone, Hitting Sergeant Steel here, and today I wanted to talk to you about some of my predictions for the second quarter 2024 balanced data slate update for the Astro Militaro. So I just got done with Adepticon. I'm back. I only played in one event. I ran two events, and so I didn't get a whole lot of play, but I did get some. I have also been playing in a local competitive league as well and spending time doing that. So I have gotten a decent amount of play in with my Astro Militarum during the first quarter of 2024. So this first section of the balanced data slate that we've done. After playing around with it and also seeing what's going on, I do want to say one thing real quick. I was right about the first quarter updates. Basically all we got was changes to our orders ability. And there were a lot of naysayers online going, oh, well th this isn't actually going to have any meaningful impact on the army or our success rate and so forth. And now, at the towards the end of this first quarter, so I suspect the balance data slate is going to come out here at the beginning of April. I'm filming this on April 1st. At this point in time, Guard is getting a 50% plus win rate in some regards. We didn't have point changes. We didn't have any other significant rules changes. All it was was simply change to the army ability for orders. I think that's really fantastic, and it was an amazing way to balance the guard. For me, and I'll just repeat what I thought, I thought that change, that subtle change, really opened up a lot of different builds, a lot of different lists, and created all kinds of opportunity for us to play the army in ways that we weren't playing it that we should have been able to play it as since the beginning attempt. So, yeah, it's a missed thing on GW's part, but they got it right. Like two like we were two balanced data slates in or three and two and then we they got it right they fixed it and now the army functions the way we were hoping it would function very exciting and i think it's really wonderful that we've gotten there now transports work coming in from reserves can be super beneficial um disembarking from a transport and issuing orders functions too uh, uh, the Hades Breaching Journal, the Crassus, the Chimera, I mean, the Stormlord, you name it. All of these un units suddenly became much more flexible and viable. So now that the majority of the units in our army are viable, and I stand by that, I think the majority of units in our current 10th edition index and the Forge World index are viable. Not saying every one. I have a couple qualms myself, but most of them are. And I've had players prove me wrong. I think the field ordnance battery is kind of lackluster. My friend Jerry has been taking it in our local competitive league. He's been taking three field ordnance batteries of a bombast field guns and annihilating his opponents. And functions in a way that I didn't imagine he'd be thinking to use them for. Um, he's just able to deliver enough shots that he can take a knight down every turn. With, with field ordnance batteries and with barely any buffs. I mean, he's not running uh, a list that really lends itself to like issuing orders to them every turn, uh, but he does have some scout sentinels and so forth. He plays it a little differently. He's changed it up a few times, but general, right? He's proven me wrong on field ordnance batteries. That's awesome. I love when I'm wrong and I love when I'm wrong for all the right reasons that somebody can use something and something works really well. So that's one good example. Other units, I think, that are just not salvageable currently until they make a change, and I doubt they will, is like the Bombard, the Colossus Bombard, or whatever they're calling now in the Forge World Index at this point. It's a cool Forge World artillery unit. They got rid of its indirect fire, and ever since they've done that, and that was a 10th edition change, it's not artillery anymore, and it feels weird. It's a siege cannon that needs direct line of sight. Now, provided it's a really tough unit, it's... Uh, you know, it's a Lehman Rust frame, so it's higher toughness and, and a better save and so forth. But that's not historically how the unit functioned, and I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around it. It does get the ability to wound monsters and vehicles. It has anti-monster and vehicle, like on a 4+, plus, so that's okay. And has devastating wounds. Okay. But without the indirect fire, um, it's just not functioning. So there's a couple points about units that I was wrong about and units that I don't think we have any hope for right now. What do I think is actually going to happen in the balanced data slate update that's upcoming? Well, here are my predictions. 
Don't be surprised if Kazer can go up. We're seeing repeated competitive lists running triple unit of Kazerkin. That is a clear sign that Kazerkin are very efficient and very effective. And especially now with these balanced day slate changes we got in January, even more effective. Um, they're able to get orders when they come in from characters. Um, if they're already in reserves, they can issue themselves orders already before the changes. Uh, so they already had that ability, but it now makes them viable in transports. Their scout move is really strong. The flexibility of their loadouts really good, especially the Plasma, Melta, and Meltamine. Meltamine is one of the most underrated war gear upgrades in all of the guard. And there's all kinds of people out there talking about it. I might do a short video later just to mention it real quick. So Kazerkin are great. And for that reason, they might go from 100 points to 110. Just don't be surprised. I've seen no leaks. This is just my own speculation. The other thing we might see change is Death Corps Creek. They're also efficient and we may see them get a five point increase. So don't be surprised when they go from 65 to 70 points. I think even if they get that small increase, they're worth it. They're totally worth it. What that is going to do though, is cause you to think about what you're gonna take out of your list. Like those two units just get tweaked, Kazerkin and Krieg, then you will have to look at, okay, well, where am I gonna cut 30 points? Where am I gonna cut 45 points and so forth. And it could be a character, could be a whole infantry unit, just depends on the list you wrote and the strategy that you're trying to employ. So don't be surprised about that. I think we could also see some point decreases. And we may see that across a few different units because there's a lot of them that just aren't being played. Hopefully Games Workshop proves us wrong and their dislike for aircraft. I think aircraft are decent at the moment. I disagree with the majority of the people online, so I'm sorry if that's not what you wanted to hear, but I've been running my Thunderbolt and I've been having a blast with it, even in competitive leagues. I ran it at the Nova at the beginning of 10th, had an absolute blast with it. I took it to the Grand Narrative, had an absolute blast with it. It performed decent, it was fun, it didn't feel overpowered. Sometimes it did just knock a unit right off the table, other times it didn't. Its key is having plus one to hit units with fly, which is a lot of units in the game, and also having anti-fly on its Hellstrike missiles. So this is where there may be subtle things in its rules that people might be overlooking that actually make it better than what they initially think on paper. But some of the flyers, like the Valkyrie and so forth, are a little overcosted, and they could deal with a little bit of a points decrease to help incentivize their use. And this is where we're going to see the points decreases in units that aren't commonly taken. So I suspect we're going to see things like that happen on maybe about a half a dozen units or so. Uh, Valkyrie are one that I would bet on. Lehman Russes, I think, are in a good place right now. But we may see one or two variants go up, like the Demolisher Cannon version or the Exterminator Auto Cannon version. And we may see a couple go down. And like the Vanquisher may still get a points decrease. That single shot is just really tough and it's hard to make that work without an actual rules change to the data slate for that unit. So expect some Lehman Rust changes potentially. Another thing I might suspect is we could see Chimera go back up. And especially now with the rules changes, that could impact that. But I don't think it's being taken in too many lists. It's mostly being taken with either Kazakin or Katachin to get the scout ability benefit as a dedicated transport. So we are seeing that. And for that reason, that may make it efficient and we may see a slight increase. But it could be wrong and it could stay stagnant. Something else we could see is a decrease in the field ordnance batteries. Speaking of which, not a lot of people are taking them. And especially the other two variants that aren't the Bombast Gun. The Heavy Laz Cannon and the Malleus Rocket Launcher are eh. And they're eh because they're not resilient. They die very easily. Basically, if you can see them and you can blink at them, they're gonna go away. Um, so we could see those two versions maybe get a decrease or maybe overall it's one data sheet. So the whole thing, you know, the whole data sheet, sorry, get a decrease for that unit just simply because as they share a data sheet and people aren't even really taking the bombast guns either. So expect maybe uh, for them to get a five or 10 point decrease. I don't expect anything major. Still in direct fire. GW does not want to open that can of worms where they make our artillery too efficient. We could see some point changes for the Volgren. 
they could go down by five points. They're just struggling. And I think a lot of folks are starting to realize and they're coming around that Ogren are a much better option. I'm writing Ogren in my list. I love them. The rules are fun. They fit the narrative, except that I can't fit a commissar in with them. Whatever. And I'm just like really effective that they're a special rule where um, they get an additional AP if they shoot the closest target. I stick them in a Crassus with a big Cadian blob and they jump out or I could put them in a Chimera if I wanted to. They jump out and they're basically better heavy bolters with more shots and better AP with a strength five minus two flat two damage. That's that's really good and very effective. So I've been using them. I mean, they die very quickly. So what you want to do is jump them out and then shoot them and then charge at something and try to kill mostly that thing, but stay tied up so you can't be shot either. Because they're not monsters. They're not vehicles, so they can't be shot in uh, melee. So your opponent would have to fall back. That might give you a chance to take out that unit, uh, potentially score some points, take an objective. And that's what I've been doing with them is try to challenge some objectives where my opponent doesn't have a lot of OC. And they do that very effectively and they kill space marines. Okay, uh, but they're Bullgrins, their counterpart. No, we're not really seeing it with Bullgrins. And even with the um, four up in Vuln or the extra wound with their war gear options, it's just not seeming to make the cut always. So subtle changes there though, nothing big. So the last thing I think we could see a change on too might be the Rough Riders. We might actually see a very small point decrease on that unit. They're effective, they're good, but they do die very easily. Same as the Field Ordnance Battery. Just seems to be a trait of being a Guardsman. You don't live very long. So that unit has been shown to be useful, has been shown to be effective, but I wouldn't be surprised if they don't just give it a little bit of a decrease in order to see it incentivized to be used in the list. This is where we're at now. We're at balancing inside of each index. So expect to see small tweaks within each index or each codex. Now that overall, we have a much better balance between all the factions in 10th edition. This is the most balanced the game has probably ever been and maybe ever will be. I hope it continues to stay balanced. And I hope that we start to see that kind of internal balancing happen more. They've been promising us this. They've been talking about it. I'm talking about Games Workshop. They're saying, oh, well, the next step is internal balance. Great, we're at Codex is being balanced. Now let's talk about the units and the detachments within being balanced. And they mentioned that their latest meta watch. So I wanna see if they cash in on that and we see some of these tweaks and adjustments for the Astromal Terum and have more units be just a little bit more viable and not seeing the same things taken over and over again in every list, which gets really boring really fast. Honestly though, I think our index is overall in a great place, even if we don't get a whole lot of changes. I've been finding every unit effective. I've been finding roles for it. And I've even been taking units that I do not believe in to try out. Have I done it with the Colossus yet? No, but I did just do it with the Macarius Vulcan. And that proved me a little wrong on what I thought that unit could do. Now it does require a certain playstyle, and I'll cover that in a unit review video. But as you try out units, try them out, see how they work. Don't let the points and don't let the first glance at the data sheet detract you from trying. Give it a shot regardless of the changes that are about to happen. And even after the changes happen, if you still don't believe in a unit, try it anyways. Give it a shot and see what you can do with it. All right, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoy my content on the Astromal Terum and Warhammer, uh, please like and subscribe and tune into the channel. I really appreciate your all support. I'm looking at creating some more ways to engage in the future, so I may start some live streams or I may start a membership service and actually offer something to you all. That's been something I've been struggling with is trying to figure out how do I create content that is worth that little bit of extra that you would be willing to give me to support me. That's why I haven't done it. I appreciate so many of you who advocate for me to do a Discord or to do membership services, but I wanna make sure I'm giving good value back to you all. So that's why I haven't done it yet. It's not that I don't wanna engage with you. I wanna make sure I do it well and I do it right. So look out for that. I'm gonna be looking at that over the next few months now that I'm back from Adepticon. And I'm also winding down the local events that I'm running at our store to take a break for the summer. So I'll be looking more into my own content as we move along. But please like, please subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope to see you all next time. Have fun gaming. And remember, Katie is Stan.